something fishy in here. Bow your heads with me. Father God, oof, this week has been quite a week for some of us. And if this were like a bunch of food, it's like a fruit salad of stuff that probably should not even belong together. But Lord, we're here right now. You've provided a space for us to worship you right now. You've provided a time for us where we can just put aside all of that right now. And you've allowed us to have this moment to just plug in with you. And so in this time, Father, whether it's folk here in this sanctuary, whether it's folk watching from, from where they're working or they're at home or through their phones, through the computer, or, or maybe even watching this later on, Lord, may this moment in time simply be a moment where we feel your presence, we receive your spirit, so that we may break every chain that may hinder us from being the created version of who you want us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, you can scroll them, you can open them, you can swipe them to the book of Luke. We're going to be in chapter 5, verse 1 through, 5, uh, 1 through 11. Um, and we are going to start by reading that scripture here uh, on screen as well, if you don't have that available with you. Again, that's Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. If you're there or you're tracking us on the screen, say, yay God. Okay, there's still a few trying to get there. It's okay. It's all right. We'll, we'll give you a few seconds. It's again, Luke chapter 5. 1 through 11. If you're there, just say, yay, God. Okay. Okay, we're, we're tracking. One day while Jesus was standing beside the Lake Galilee, many people were pressing all around him to hear the word of God. Jesus saw two boats at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Verse uh, 3. Jesus, go, Jesus got into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, and asked him to push off a little from the land. Then Jesus sat down and continued to teach, and the people uh, to teach the people from the boat. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, "Take the boat into the deep water and put your nets in the water to catch some fish." Simon answered, "Master, we worked hard all night trying to catch fish, and we caught nothing. But you say, put the nets in the water, so I will." When the fishermen did, as Jesus told them, they caught so many fish that the nets began to break. They called to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full that they were almost sinking. When Simon Peter saw what had happened, he bowed down before Jesus and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. He and the other fishermen were amazed at the many fish they caught. As were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners, Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. When the men brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. Something fishy in here. How many of you have walked in an Asian store? I can only speak of Asian store because that's, that's where I can relate, right? can't speak of other stores. But how many of you have walked in an Asian store and suddenly you are met by a smell? If you're not, if you're not familiar or used to going in an Asian store, this smell meets you with a great welcome and you're like, something fishy in here. And I like this, 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 um, this meme that I saw. It said, ew, what's that smell? Leave it to the Asians. That, my friend, is the smell of savings. Have you walked also into a Filipino home? Anybody? All right. All right. We'll, we'll do something about that. See, back home in the Philippines, 
most windows are open because it's, it's just tropical weather most of the time. Even in winter time, it's like 75, 80 degrees, right? So, so windows are open. We, we don't close the windows. And, and, and some of these homes even have the kitchen outside, you know, not even enclosed. So it's out in the open back door, right? And so when, when, when Filipinos cook fish, right, like it's full on smelling like fish. And it didn't make a difference back home and it, because it was not, not, not really, um, what do you call this, inside. But when you have a Filipino home in America where, where during summer it's all air conditioned and during winter it's all heating, everything is closed. And, and I experienced here in Minnesota that the, the exhaust fan is really just recycling that air it's really not getting out of the house right and, and if that vent is right next to to the kitchen and that's the same vent that feeds air into the entire house i walk out of the house sometimes and i'm like what is that smell right and and it and it, it just gets fishier and as I was preparing this message today, I came across some pictures back in 2015 that, that helps emphasize what we're going to be talking about. And this first one is, um, again, um, a video that I took. This is, by the way, please, please, don't be judging. This was the time when selfie stick was the thing. All right, you with me? All right, so don't, don't be like, look at him, like, right? Uh, and this was also the time when Asian hair split in the middle was a cool thing. All right, so let's let's just put that disclaimer there because some of you will be texting me during my message like that hair though, right? I, I know some of you will. Be, but What's up, guys? Right now I'm uh, at the Sea of Galilee um, on the uh, north end side, Capernaum. Behind me is the Sea of Galilee, and uh, now behind me is the church where um, Jesus fed his disciples and back there right up that area is where a statue is created that uh, talks about where Jesus said to Peter now feed my sheep peace yeah, you gotta enjoy and, and the next one is actually where I was standing this was the north end of the Sea of Galilee okay this is, uh, it, was, it was a little cloudy, but you can almost see on the other side, right, if it was a clear day, um, what it would look like in the entire place. Um, Duluth was nice, though. Duluth, Duluth, Duluth was nicer than this, even on a cloudy, uh, foggy day. Um, uh, like I mentioned in the video, this church... Um, was not there before, but there is a rock inside this church. The church is called Capernaum, the town of Jesus. And this actually says the, the primacy of St. Peter, you know, by the wall. And then this is the rock inside that church. And on this rock, they claim, was the rock where Jesus cooked fish for his disciples. It didn't smell fishy when I was there, but... That's that I'm, I'm told that that's where he literally cooked fish for his disciples. I was like just amazed that I was at the same location where Jesus was. That to me just made Bible clear. That to me just made Bible more relevant. And at the top of, you know, where, where the trees were was a statue. And that statue really represents where Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord. He said, feed by sheep. That's where it happened. Again, it was just so cool to be at the same spot where Jesus was, right? Um, what do I have next here? So on the other side, across the street of that church is actually a restaurant where they serve food and they call it St. Peter's Fish, okay? Um, you, you can go to a live cam real quick. My version of the story, my version, was that right around the time we got married, Marifil made it clear, my wife, that 
she is and will continue to be a fisherman's daughter, okay? I'm a, I'm a farmer's daughter. I'm a, a jungle boy, right? She's, she's a fisherman's daughter. And so she made sure that I was aware fish as food is always going to be part of life. And that if I had any desire to make this marriage work, I better be quick to be hip on that fish eating, okay? It took a while. I'm no longer vegetarian. I can eat fish now. It has to be really salty. It has to be very, like, deep fried, you know, none of these baked fish, right? That, that, that's just not going to work, right? And she even told me today that at her job, uh, some, a co-worker um, challenged her to a smelling or eating the stinkiest fish um, in the world competition. They did not know who they were challenging because she would probably bring a stinkier fish, you know, to this challenge, right? Like, she loves fish. And so when I went to the Sea of Galilee and, and was told that there's St. Peter's fish nowhere else in the world, but right there across the street from the north end of the Sea of Galilee, guess what I was about to do? I was about to impress my bride <laughs> that I can eat St. Peter's fish. All right, not just any fish, St. Peter's fish. So the next slide actually was, was me holding the fish. Now, again, don't be judging because fish is fish, right? Like I, I, I just said, I'm about to be the real kind of husband. Uh, I'm about to eat this entire fish. And you don't know, Filipinos eat fish including the head. <laughs> See? It's not just me, right? Like, that, that's real life. Now, <clears throat> I know. Suddenly people are like, I don't want to eat lunch anymore. Um, <laughs> there's something fishy when something smells fishy and it's not right, and when people can smell it, you don't have to tell them. They will know that something is fishy. When we go to Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 3, we find ourselves um, um, in a situation where Jesus was being pressed by, by all these individuals who just wanted to hear about him. And, and, and he said to Simon, by the way, you hear the, the, the name Simon Peter all the time, right? It's not just Simon. It's not just Peter. But you still hear Simon Peter. And we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about that, what that really means. But in verse 1, you will hear that, you will read that one day while Jesus was standing beside Lake Galilee, many people were pressing all around him to hear the word of God. Jesus saw two boats at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. And he chose Simon's boat. Near this area was where Jesus chose the boat of Simon, where I was eating that fish. And it's just amazing how the experience of Scripture comes to life when you're actually not just reading it, you're, at, you're on site and experiencing it. Now, the reason why Jesus says, Simon, let me use your boat, is because he is saying, I don't want anybody else's boat. I want your boat. And, and, and take notice, friends, take notice. He chose Simon's boat. He didn't choose Peter's boat. You with me? He chose Simon's boat. Now, Simon's boat represents us before we are transformed. See, our God is a name-changing kind of God. All right? he, he loves doing that. He, he changed Simon to Peter. But he calls us while we're still Simon. Not when we're already Peter. Take note of that. And he sees us who we are, not who we can be, but he grows us and calls us so that we can become how potential version of us 
can be when we, when we go and worship Him and follow Him. So, and then you go to verse 4 and 5, you will catch the attitude of Simon where he said, Master, all night I've been fishing. He says, Master, all night I've been fishing. Now, follow here, follow here. What, what Simon is saying is, okay, Jesus, are you for real? Like, I'm the fisherman. You're a carpenter. You, you don't come and tell a fisherman where to cast his nets. You, you don't come and tell the fisherman that, that there is a difference on this side of the boat and on that side of the boat. You're a carpenter. And if we're really being honest with ourselves, if we really listen to our prayers, I know it's getting a little personal. It's getting warm, right? If we're really being honest to ourselves, when we pray, the way we pray, the content of our prayers, the, the, the stuff that we add in our prayers is really like saying, well, 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 well God, you don't know. Because this is how I want you to answer my prayer. And the beauty about how God works with us is that He comes and provides fish even before we catch it. He comes and answers our prayers even before we ask it. Now, casting it from one side makes no sense whatsoever. Same ocean, same boat, same location, different side. Like, really? There, there's a difference on one side versus the other side? Now, come on. How many times have we fought God, resisted Him, um, delayed the answer of His calling in our hearts to give our hearts to Him? In fact, if, if, if we are really, really, truly looking at ourselves right now, what we're saying is, I'm not going to cast. Because I've done that. I've been there so many times. I've done it over and over and over again. And casting it just on the other side in the same ocean is not going to change anything. The same body of water is not going to change just because I cast it on the other side. But what Jesus was trying to prepare Simon before his name changed to Peter was that if Simon was going to be Peter, the rock, it was not going to be by his own doing, but by what God was going to do and guide him to do. When, when God calls us as Simons, what he's saying is, I got you. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be already there. In fact, the way to get there is by following me, receiving me, responding to me. Notice again, Simon's response in verse 5 where he said, Master, you know this was something we tried all night. You know what you're asking me to do is ridiculous. You know I have experience in this. But hear this, friends. Simon said, but master, because you said so, I will do. He, see, there, there's where the change happens. There's where the transformation happens. Even if we've been doing all sorts of these things already, even when we're convinced that we, it's not going to work, when God woos in our hearts and really calls us to change, it could be the very same thing that we've been doing over and over again. It could be the very same job that we need to apply. It could be the very same people we have to keep calling who hangs up on us or never responds our text message. It could be the same child who just rebels against us. It could be the same parent who has abused us or our life. It could be anybody, any situation that we've been doing and we know it's not going to work. But when Jesus says, cast one more time, that means He is saying to us, trust me. Just trust me. Do it because I got you. Now, if you go further in, in verse 6 and 7 uh, of this chapter, you will notice that when Peter's boat started to fill and it was about to start sinking, he did a signal. Now, here's my claim to relation to Peter as a Filipino. He just did a signal. 
He didn't, he didn't call out, you know, he didn't, he didn't do a communication. He didn't text message or anything. He just did a signal. And, and you know how Filipinos communicate? Watch this. Like, if you see a bunch of Filipinos around you, right, and they're just seeing each other for the first time after a while, they don't say hello right away. They just go. Watch. It, it like, you're going to catch it. Now that you see it, just. And the person... I, w I was updated uh, after first service that usually it's only the guys that do it. But I'm going to challenge it. It's anybody in Filipino, right? And, and then when they, when, when they receive that, the other person will go. And that whole translates to, how's your family? How are you doing? What's up? And that responds to, I'm good. Everything's cool. Thanks for checking. Good to see you. And that's what Peter did. He didn't have to have a whole community. He just said, and their fish, their boat, their, their fish nets, and their boat got filled too, so that it started to sink. Could it be possible the other lives are not receiving the full blessing because we haven't sent the signal to others that God has been blessing our lives? Could it be possible that we're so consumed with how our boats are sinking, we forget that our nets are so full? Could it be possible that we focus on the stinkiness of fish on our boats, that we forget to share with others the signal, just the signal to let them know that you too can be blessed. Just come on over. See, that's something that, that, that Jesus was trying to remind Peter that it's not all about you, Peter. If you're, if you're going to be from Simon to Peter, you got to trust me. And when you trust me, not only you will be blessed, others will be blessed because of you as well. Going further to verse 8 through 10, when Jesus um, filled Peter's boat, his first reaction was not, OMG, what? Jesus? No. Peter's first, uh, Simon's first reaction was he fell on his knees and he said, God, go away from me, Lord. Now, those are strong words. <laughs> you don't tell somebody who just blessed you to go away. You don't, you don't go to somebody who just paid for your drive through or paid for your meal somewhere else and just say, go away. That, that's, that's not how it works. But I don't think that's what Simon was trying to do, see? I think what Simon was trying to, to say in this situation, we should, Jesus, I am not worthy. Please go away. I'm a sinful man. I don't deserve this. And when Simon experienced that and said, go away, it was at that moment where Simon saw Simon for who he was, but also realized the Peter he was about to be in Jesus. It was at this moment where Simon could smell all the things that were smelling fishy in his life. He looked at the fish for what fish was and was okay to leave it because now he was ready for the life of Peter fishing other people. If we only allow ourselves to see the moving of God in our lives, we begin to realize what smells fishy. It could be our attitudes, pride, power struggles, conceitedness, self-pity, and all these things that make us stink. Once we realize that and recognize that the path God has already set before us, then and only then can we say, God, go away. I am not worthy. You have already blessed me and provided for me. So what did Simon do? He knelt down and recognized his place. Further down, to verse 11, when we realize how full our nets can get, when we bow down in humility and realize the unworthiness of our Simon, we begin to become the Peter that God relies on us to be the rock for others. And then when we get back on shore, after an experience with Jesus, just like the disciples did, we end up leaving our boats and nets at the shore, and we choose to only follow where Jesus leads. What is the area of fishing God is calling in your life today? 
Maybe it is that one phone call to that very same person who you put off over the years, over a broken relationship, and just feel like it's not going to work. There's no point and there's no use. Or maybe it's that one person who God wants you to just forgive and let go and love the hurts that came with it and move on. Or maybe it could be your discipleship in showing a father figure or a mother figure to your own child when they are at their most difficult place of loving. Or your fishing could be where a husband or a wife celebrates the blessings instead of pointing out the challenges of that person every single day. Or, you know, just maybe your fishing expedition is to be a mentor, a leader, and a participant or a contributor to the young adult ministry of Minnetonka Church. Uh, you know, I just got to slide it in. Just got to add it. You know, but in reality, it's really the areas of ministry you're passionate about. The talents that God has given you. The question really becomes, after this worship service, when your boats come to shore and you lay down your nets, how are you responding to God's calling to come and be fishers of people? Or are we just going to let whatever smells fishy be fishy? When you start smelling something fishy in your life, let it be a reminder to stop sitting on your boat right next to your nets and start following the calling that Jesus has called you to be as fishers of people. I don't know your story. I don't know your journey. But here's what I know. We go through these experiences of being called as Simons, prepared to be Peters. I don't know what that translates to you. And perhaps the real message really is going to happen after I sit down, after I shut up, and God instills in your mind how He's working in your life. And maybe you're, you're, you're at a place where you're already serving. I don't know your journey, but here's the reminder for us today. How are we being changed from a Simon to a Peter? And what are we going to do about it? May it be, that when Jesus comes through the clouds, that our response was, yep, that stunk. That was pretty fishy. And thank you, Lord, for calling me anyway, because here I am, happy to serve you. Maybe for you, it's time to go fishing for the kingdom now. Maybe for you, it's time to reach out to that somebody now. However it is, May your Simon life become a Peter life in Jesus' name. Amen.